insulate Britain protesters have shut down one of the country's busiest motorways three times now in five days, leaving some motorists stuck on the M25 for more than six hours. The Home Secretary plans to target illegal protests under a new policing and crime bill, so is it time to get tough on disruptive protesters. Well, we discussed this last week. We make no apology for coming back to it because it's a big one. Joining us now is the former leader of the Green Party, Natalie Bennett, who supports these protests, Root and Branch, and Chris Phillips, a former police officer and former head of the National Counter-Terrorism Office. Um, Ms. Bennett, I'd like to, like to start with you. I mean, you would have seen the Sunday papers yesterday. I could have brought a box full of clippings in today. Every single paper across the board, commentators, left, right and centre, all saying that these protests are a disgrace and counterproductive. And I'm just going to quote you one paragraph, which I think summarises the mood, not just of the commentators, but of, I think you'd agree, the vast majority of people in this country. Not everybody, but most. Um, this is from Rod Liddell's column in the Sunday Times. Quote, only the supremely arrogant would argue that blocking a road raises awareness of the urgency with which we need to tackle climate change. Those queuing car drivers are no less aware of global warming than are the protesters. What exactly is gained by sitting in the road other than giving the participants the pleasant illusion that they're saving the world by acting like spoilt toddlers? Spoilt toddlers. Not a bad description, is it? Uh, no, I would absolutely disagree with that. What we have are people who realise we're in an emergency situation that we need to act. And it's working because I'm now on breakfast television talking to you about home insulation and the fact that we desperately need to slash our emissions but also give people warm, comfortable, affordable homes to heat. This is something the Green Party has been trying to get uh, attention to for a decade. Uh, it's something the uh, Independent Committee on Climate Change two years ago told the government you have to act urgency urgently. The two years ago, the National Infrastructure Commission told the government you have to act urgency. People have been trying very hard to get action from the government for a decade. They've failed. This is the last ditch action, uh, the last ditch effort to ensure that we act on something that's crucial both for tackling the I climate. Think, climate. Natalie Bennett, I think, I think a lot of people noise. will see that actually you haven't got action. What you've done is you've aggravated a lot of people. And not just that, you, you have threatened people's health, livelihoods and lives. I think a number of people might be aware of this call made to LBC last week um, over the last couple of days and this is very distressing to listen to. This is what happens when you do what you did. The doctors have said that if we were to have got to them within 90 minutes, her symptoms, her, her, um, uh, her recovery would have been minimal, would have been minimised. Because she'd been left to endure a full-on stroke mm. for six hours, it is severe. She's got complete paralysis, paralysis now down her left side. Six hours they were stuck because of that blocking of the motorway. Six hours. And as a result, that's just one person. If they'd got to hospital, if Chris got his mum to hospital, in an hour and a half, and he wanted to go because he was worried about an ambulance, she could have been protected. Instead, he was there for six hours. And she's paralysed. She's paralysed. How is that helping? I, of course, have the greatest sympathy for Chris and his mum, and I wish him and his mum all the very best. Big deal. That's um, not helping them, is it? She's paralysed. She's paralysed because she was stuck in traffic for six hours when she should have been in hospital getting blood thinners. And you, off and you offer your sympathies. I don't think they want your sympathies. They want you to explain why you think it's reasonable to do that to another human being in the cause of, of what you regard as the greater good. And I have to say that what comes off the people who are sitting on these motorways is the stench of self-satisfaction and a complete ignorance of the pain and suffering and risk to life that their self-satisfaction is causing. I don't think they want your... I don't think people who are suffering want your sympathy. They want you to wake up and see what it is you're doing to private individuals. Well, I was actually live on LBC on Wednesday morning and I was listening to some of the people who were affected there and one of them was a pharmacist who was concerned that he wasn't able to open his pharmacy. But he said, you know, I'm angry about this, but I also understand that this is a climate emergency and that you need to act. And indeed, you were just uh, hearing from the Thames Barrier 
about the way in which... What about the woman who was paralysed? Sorry, no, I don't really care about a pharmacist who... I don't really care about a pharmacist who, who, who gets the point. Let's come back to that well, clip we just played. Unless you, you were someone who wanted and needed to get your medication very urgently Absolutely. from that pharmacy that morning. So stick to that point. Why is it justified to basically send a woman in a state of paralysis to hospital because she couldn't get the medical treatment otherwise she would have had much earlier? Can you justify that? What we're aiming to do is tackle a climate emergency that threatens millions of lives throughout the world, that threatens lives in the UK. I was in Kendall yesterday. People are still talking on a daily basis regularly about Storm Desmond um, and fearing the next storm. People fear for their lives now. The climate emergency is an absolute threat to the life of people. Uh, we need emergency action. Every other measure has been so tried. What you're saying is it's, it's worth <laughs> risking the lives of individual people because you're so worried about uh, the climate emergency risking people's lives. I don't think anyone is any any doubt about the climate emergency. We have just been hearing from Laura. We know the issue. What we don't want is for people to suffer today because of the disruptive protests. Now, Chris Phillips, you're a former police officer. What viewers don't understand is when people's lives are at risk right now, why the police don't stop it? Yeah, well, the, the police are always in the middle of this and uh, have to deal with the, 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 the issues that are uh, raised here. Uh, but don't forget, there's hundreds of single issue groups out there all wanting to make their peace to the to the world. They would see this as a big success because they've got the message out. We're talking about it today. Uh, but actually, there's hundreds of others doing that. And the, and the police have to deal with that. But they have to deal with it within the legislation that they've got. And I think this is the misunderstood piece is that the legislation, the Human Rights Act, Supreme Court judgments mean that the police have got to deal with it in a way, probably they would never have dealt with it in the past. And, you know, from an ex-police officer, I can say it was brilliant before. It clearly wasn't always brilliant. But uh, issues like this, uh, incidents like this, would have been dealt with uh, much quicker and, yep. uh, and much firmer. But what enrages people is, uh, again, an audio clip, a radio clip that was on YouTube all of last week of a, of a senior woman police officer chatting in a very friendly way to the protesters as they, as they block the motorway, causing the kind of life and death issues that we're talking about, and basically saying to them, if there's anything we can get you, um, anything you need to help you make you more comfortable, don't hesitate to ask, and uh, we'll, 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 do, we'll, we'll be as nice as we can to you. That's not policing. I mean, that, that, that's, that's the way a cabin crew member talks to a passenger on a plane. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and the, the, the issue is, I think police officers are scared now. They, they, they are scared to deal with these things. They know the cameras are on them. They know that that clip, uh, is going to be on national news uh, and it's going to be overplayed many, many times. So they're very concerned about their own uh, person, the way they look on camera to some extent, but also uh, how they treat the demonstrators. Here's now, what, of course, here's there's a big I, here, difference. Here, here's, 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 what, here's, what I don't, um, here's what I don't understand. If I were to leave here today and, and go up to the M25 and park my car on a roundabout and walk down the slip road, Right, and there was a there was a police car nearby. I'd get arrested. Um, that's an offence. You, you you're not allowed to to walk down a slip road of a motorway. But if I had a banner um, asking for Britain to be insulated, they'd probably take me by the arm and help me sit down. That that's the that's the dichotomy that we're talking about here. There seems to be one law for for people who aren't protesting and another for those who are, and it's weird. It's it's the against the law to block the traffic. You're quite right, and that that differentiated by peaceful protest as against disorderly process, if you like, or, or the standard laws. And unfortunately, you need, you need to leave, look, look at our legislation. You need to look at uh, what the, the Supreme Court have said. You know, they've actually effectively made it lawful for uh, people to peacefully demonstrate and block the road. That's, uh, that came out a couple of years ago from a, a previous case. So the police have to work within that legislation. If you want to stop this thing, this type of thing from happening, and as, as I said before, there are hundreds of single interest groups who all feel that they need to get media coverage. So the likelihood is that the next week it will be another group. Then you do have to you have to deal with them well, let's in talk a way. About me let's Not talk. Let's go back to Natalie and talk Natalie Bennett and talk about media coverage. Listen, if this goes on, we're going to have deaths. I mean, we've come perilously close mm -hmm. to people dying. We've had people having heart attacks in the, in the traffic. We've had the, the case that we just played, and we've got broader issues as well. What would you say, Natalie? Be honest, what would you say to a couple with, say, a seven-year-old child who is due to have absolutely vital cancer surgery today?
that can't have it because they and that child are stuck in a tailback. What would you say, face to face, what would you say to them? Well, what I would say is that protesters always, every protest I've been involved with, have always worked very hard to ensure that the emergency vehicles can get through, that, that arrangements can be made so that people can get through those systems. No, a um, with and a child in the back seat of a car well, who's due, who's due, well, can, who's due well, cancer surgery, well, who's due well, cancer well, surgery, well, who's well, due well, cancer well, surgery well, this day and can't have it because they're stuck in a in a six mile tailback. What would you say to that? What would you say to that family? Well, I would say that there are. You know, this is a hypothetical you're setting out now. Oh, what it's not hypothetical. It's happening. We're talking about, about protest. We're talking about the right to protest, and this is something that's a democratic right that existed in the UK for a very long time. And what we're facing now, I was in the second reading in the House of Lords last week of the policing right. bill, which threatens right. to take away the right. So it would be the Home Secretary which would decide whether a protest was justified or not. Well, I and a Home I, Secretary I'm would going to decide take... whether. It's too loud. Okay, um, Natalie, I'm going to take that one to the bank. I'm going to take that one to the. I'm going to take that one to the bank from this interview, Natalie. That you've just told me that the kind of scenario that I've just outlined, and I, we outlined them in the studio last week, is a hypothetical. It's not hypothetical. It's real.